So how do we unlearn? How do we, in order to unlearn a should, first we need to pay attention to how we learned it. What are the sources of learning as we grow up and go through this world? How do we learn what we think we know about shoulds? From our parents. Parents! So oftentimes we get shoulds from our parents, right? Sit up, you know, be on time, eat your vegetables, you know? And you know, a lot of those shoulds sometimes, if they're done a certain way, can be taken in as caring, but a lot of times some of those shoulds can be destructive as well, especially if they're telling you to be someone intrinsically different from who you are. How else do we learn shoulds? Demetrius. Oh, media. Media. Say more about that. How does the media impact our shoulds? Like, for example, we see in the billboards, we have to be like, I don't say handsome, but like athletic, big muscles, for women have big breasts, big butts, that kind of stuff. <laughs> right, yeah. right. And it's true, and it's good that we can laugh at that because it, it's funny, but, but think about how that does affect how we look at ourselves and when we look in the mirror. What if you're not meeting up to that? What if you're not at that point where you exactly match those examples you gave? If you're a man and a woman and you're looking in the mirror saying, wait, maybe I, sh I should look more like those people, and not even necessarily realizing you're telling yourself that. You know, the media can be such a powerful form of education for shoulds. And, you know, we all live in New York, and we're bombarded with, like, these, you know, thousands of messages from the moment we leave our apartments to where we get where we're going on the subway, on the street. We're constantly bombarded with shoulds that you should look a certain way, you should be someone else other than you are. Thank you for that. So just looking at this, I mean, just looking at this, we're looking at the sources of the shoulds that we carry. We've got parents, media, friends, education and science, school, coworkers, strangers, religion, government, gender roles, siblings, parents, and I'm sure there's many, many, many more we haven't touched upon. But can you imagine then, is it becoming a little more clear how it is that we incorporate these shoulds? Why it is that we might be struggling to get through in life, to get through with some peace of mind, right? And in order to have a more peaceful and happier existence, I think we need to look at these and just to say, without necessarily judgment or condemnation, how did I learn this should? So it is like stopping a red light where people have said to me, like, if I didn't have shoulds, why would I go to my crappy job? Why would I bother to, to go and, and to feed my kids? And why would I do things I don't want to do? And the question I always have them is, yes, why would you? Right. And why do you now? Are you, I mean, <laughs> because the consequences are, I mean, you could do the same thing. You could go to your job and you could get that paycheck and feed your kids all from a place of should and be angry and bitter and resentful. Or you could do the same things from a place of, I choose to do a job because it will get the money that I need to support my kids, to, to express the love, to, to honor the children, to honor the people in my life. Or even when it comes to safe sex, or drug use, you know, it's not like I shouldn't use drugs. I could choose to express myself in healthier ways that aren't harmful to me and aren't harmful to the people around me, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just like you said, it's, it's like stopping at a red light. You say, I should do it, I don't want to do it, I should do it, or you could do it, well, it's like, because if I don't, I could kill somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would be really upsetting. Mm -hmm. And I could be killed. And that would upset the people around me who care about me. So I'm gonna to choose to honor myself and the people I care about, and the strangers out there who I don't know, by stopping at a red light. And it is, you might do the same exact thing, but it's, you do it from a different mindset. And that's where freedom comes in. That's where I think empowerment comes in. And the other thing that, that I just always keep in mind, which is true in any recession, any economy, that women, especially women, and sometimes men, get shoulds to look a certain way, to use certain products, and once again, if you're doing that from a place of what's true for you, that's a beautiful thing. But what happens is so often people are told there's something wrong with the way you look, but you should buy my products. So Tony mentioned the teeth whitening, right? Classic. That's the new thing. Your teeth are no longer okay. They're no longer, you know, your teeth should be straight, they should be white. You know, you should never show pimples, you should never show blemish, and, and you know, none of us should ever have wrinkles, God forbid, right? These are the messages that we get, and there are billions and billions of cash registers going off every time we tell ourselves one of these shits. What happened? <laughs> what do you think? That was bad. <laughs> so, you know, again, it's just to keep in mind, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with taking medications if they help you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with cosmetics if they bring you happiness. But it is problematic when you're doing it, and the feeling that comes out of that is disempowerment and feeling like you're not good enough. 
I mean, again, think about it. Just any time you come into anywhere. Let's say you go into a restaurant. There's automatic shoulds that play into that. I should at some point get a seat. I should sit at a table. I should order food. The food that's brought to me should be correct. All these shoulds that play into our mind. Now, again, these are pretty, these are not a big deal, right? They're fairly benign. But what happens when reality operates against it? What happens when things don't go well? What happens when you're standing around waiting for that table? What happens when your food comes cold? What happens when your server is rude? You know, this is when our blood pressure starts to go up, our muscles start to squeeze up, acid gets deposited in our stomach, and we start to, you know, really become very right. Very right. You know, of course, because this is how things should be. You know, don't do that. Everybody knows that. You know, fine. You could be right. Sometimes we have to choose between being right and happy. And that's another saying from Byron Katie that I love. Do you want to be right today or do you want to be happy? And I mean, and it gets back, so earlier you mentioned bullies, and I wanted to come back to that, because, you know, again, relevant to what we've been talking about in terms of bullying, and it, bullying is literally a violent should. Literally is the idea that I don't like who you, sh you are, you should be different, you should be normal, and I'm going to beat the crap out of you until you become that. And I think when we've been living in a, uh, nearly a decade of war, of pretty much mentality being the same thing, we can't be surprised when kids take on those attributes. But the thing that we don't always want to look at is how, perhaps, in our own lives, we perpetuate bullying. And I'm talking about the subtle things now. I'm talking about the things, you know, sometimes even with our friends that we may not realize, you know, saying you should be losing weight, or you should be married by now, or you should be making this much money, or you should not sing Christmas carols, or you should only sing Hanukkah things. Just the minor, minute ways that we might be imposing and subtly bullying people around us to do what we think they should do. Those are how, those are things that I think that's beneficial for all of us to look at, especially in a day and age where we're talking about the concept of bullying. Because it's not always so obvious, it's not always violent, and it's not always just like kids kicking each other around in the yard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I see online just some like, yeah. like Incredible, like, you know, I mean, I think technology is great, and I, but I also see it sometimes being used to bully people. I'm not talking about kids, I'm talking about adults on Facebook and Twitter, and how sometimes people use that new technology to bully each other and to convince each other that they should be doing something different. And again, all I'm saying is that we may not, I may have no control over what someone tells me, about what someone says about me, about what they say I should do, or whether I should shut up or not. What I do get control over is what I tell myself and the shits I give myself about what they're saying. You know, so if someone thinks, you know, Damon's the worst, you know, therapist in the world, I get a choice based on what I've learned and based on these ideas, I get a choice mm -hmm. about how much it's gonna affect what I do next. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times it's like, when we do make this change, it's not like we suddenly feel like static, like, oh my gosh, now I'm on top of the world, but sometimes it's just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And a little bit better is better than nothing at all. Um, as far as gifts, you know, and you could say I could buy gifts for people, um, or I could choose to give people non-expensive gifts. I could choose to give something to people that doesn't cost any money. Um, I did a, a blog talk radio show earlier today with Jacqueline Zeman from General Hospital, and we went on and on and on about the, the gifts that don't cost anything. Making CDs for people, or writing letters to people, or if you have a service, or if you have a craft, doing that for someone. Things that are, don't cost anything or barely cost anything at all. There's so many ways to express caring during the holidays. But Steve Jobs would be very, very happy if we all believed that we should be giving each other iPods and iPads and whatever, I, what else, is that, you know, well, we should be I bankrupt after that. <laughs> <laughs>